And first of all, I want to start off with this. I'm going to, I'm going to mention a few names and I want you to tell me what pops into your mind when you hear names like this and I'm going to share this little clip here that has such significance. When I say the word Tyson Fury, what comes to mind? Right. Oh, man, uh, a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. But what comes to mind is uh, someone who do anything to win, you know? Yeah. That's what comes to mind initially. That's the main thing. You know, a lot of things come to mind, but yeah. someone who, who will do anything to win, you know? And, okay. And then when I say anything now, I'm, I'm that person who will do anything to win. But when yes. I in this situation where I say someone who will do anything to win, I mean – Someone who would do things outside of boxing yeah. <laughs> rules to win, you know. Yeah. That's what, and and this be throwing any shade, you know. I mean, no, 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 no. I get it. Because you and I was people. We we spoke about this topic uh, just a minute, and I wanted to get you on to say something specifically because you you did a demonstration, and and you're the most positive guy that you know in the sport of boxing. When it's all said and done. There are people who are who are talking about being in, talking about their life, but you are yeah. truly about their life. And I want to play. Like I say, I'm not gonna make listen to this clip. Steve yes. Cunningham was a boxer. A very good fighter. Yeah, I mean, small guy in for the heavyweight division, but a very good fighter. Very good. Like I say, the toughest man I ever faced was Steve Cunningham. You hear that? The toughest man, yes, sir. Yes. The, the toughest yes. man that I ever faced was Steve Cunningham. How does that make you feel? Mm. <laughs> yeah, dude, that that took me to another level of of who I am, you know, mm -hmm. mentally, and another level of wow, you know, look what you did. Because, I mean, not to, I don't, I'm not going to be long at all, but on this, but. For me, I know my journey, you know. You, yes. you know your journey. You know your ups, your yes. downs, your ins and outs. Yes. For me, I picked up boxing at 19 years old. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. At 19, my first amateur fight. And from there, I, it was all belief. It was all hard work, grind, and determination. Yeah. Every aspect of my career, from amateur to pro, there were mad obstacles. And, yeah. I, and I know everybody has obstacles. But for me... I, it was. It just seemed extra. Now in life, for me, I know. I know for a fact when you mm -hmm. when you when obstacles occur like that on on such a level of trying to make you quit, trying to make you sit down. That means you on the right path, you know, yeah, and don't quit. Yeah. You know? Hopefully, <laughs> everybody can see this because, man, to come up from cruiserweight. And do this is is amazing. Here's my screen. I'm not going to make any excuses. Yeah. Steve Cunningham was a better boxer. A very good fighter. Yeah, a small guy in for the heavyweight division, but a very good fighter. Very good. Like I say, the toughest man I ever faced was Steve Cunningham. I love seeing that clip <clears throat> because I know what your weight class was. <laughs> When I saw you step up in there, and I was like, wow, you brought that smoke. I was out outside of myself. And to drop someone with the ability, that kind of just shows your grit, your determination, your focus, your willpower. You don't see anything in front of you that you will allow defeat you. And that man thinks of you as the best fighter that he's been in the ring with, and very well so. I don't think that's changed until this day. Up until the point of joining with Al Heyman as my – making Al Heyman my agent, dealing yes. with PBC, I didn't have – I never had anyone behind me. Yeah. And, 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 I'm going to stop you right there. Speak yep. to that point. Because a lot of fighters, they see the Floyd Mayweathers. They see the people yes. who, like the De La Hoyas, and they don't realize – just because you go to the gym, that's not going right. to come with it when you sign the contract. Speak to that specifically, Steve. What does it take whenever you are an athlete, especially of your caliber? You are one of the top fighters 
in the generation starting from the late 90s to, to this point mm -hmm. that yeah. that had the skills, the look, the marketing look, the whole entire package. And what else does it take? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a very good question. Yeah. I, I, be blat blatant and fast with this. A lawyer. You need a lawyer. You can have all of the skill set in the world. You mm -hmm. can have all of the talent, the drive. You can you can have the the look. You can have all of that. If you don't have a lawyer, your boxing career will be uncomfortable. Yeah. You have to get a lawyer. You have to get a lawyer. Um, you can have a manager. You know, yeah. and and you got to watch those managers too. This is the reason I made my wife my manager. Yeah. You know, my my wife has a marketing degree from Boston University. So, but we learned on the job. We learned on my whole career. We, me and my wife say now, now that I have children who box, you know, my yeah. 17 year old in about four years or three years, he'll be going pro. Um, so we are and my nine year old, both of them are top rated in the country. Number one, my nine year old is number one in the country. My 17 year old is number four in the country. Um, my nine year old is a two time national champion. So we've said this, my career was, I was a guinea pig. Yes. You know? No. Because we, we remember we this. Um, you cannot rem remember Floyd Senior. Yeah, yeah. Then came Roger. Yep, yep. Then came See, Floyd. No, you are the. You broke the ice. You, you broke the playing field. Mm -hmm. You gave. You gave the game. You gave the, mm -hmm. the the starting point. You you gave the the step by step. You had to learn through experience because you know why. I think a lot of us do that because we have this whole package. We have the look, we have the, the athletic ability, you have the, 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 the grit, right. and you have the discipline. And you also had good support because I, yep. I watched your wife support you and amazing. Yep. Like you get one of those every million, you know, <laughs> you know that, that, that understand how to be, you know, that person, that individual. So with that, I can understand, but your, it was, you were not, you were not, you were a lot more than what you call again. You gave pride to the sport of boxing. Thank there is you. no Thank person you. that can mention your name and mm. think anything other than, yeah, he gave pride. He gave us the ability to speak about boxing to people who are not in the world of boxing. I'm around a lot of mm. professionals. I'm around the people that start companies and build companies and, and grow companies. So you can't talk about some dude in the gutter all the time you know, right. who, who robbed right. and steal and, and that they can't, it's not relatable, but a man who, who showed a, a, an offensive prowess, a business prowess and a skill set and was honorable and fought for his country. You cannot, yeah. everybody can relate as far as respect that. So that's what you gave. So your story had to be told. And yeah. as you were telling the story, you just happened to be boxing. <laughs> right, right, right. Right, you know indeed, me? man. So, yeah. so the main thing I would tell fighters, man, is get a lawyer. You know, um, like I said, we I was the guinea pig. We learned everything off the cuff, you know, on, yeah. on, on job training. And yeah. it was a great career, you know. I mean, with the ups and downs, I, I enjoyed my career. You know, I loved it. Uh, I, I'm not finished yet. Let me say that. I still want to do one or two more fights. But outside of that, you know, yeah. I, I'm done, you know. But... Um, a lawyer because if your if your promoter has a lawyer yes you need a lawyer period yeah yeah and that that does because people you're so busy training at, in the yeah. gym that there's too much to be to there there's just too yep. much to know and too much yeah. left to figure out and with yep. that being said you can't possibly be doing both of them so once again i appreciate the fact that you have done more for the sport that you are not even speaking of so because you're so humble and focused and if i was born with the abilities that someone has like yourself to have the the cachet to get up and 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 join the military and be in the navy that's honorable that'll never go away and to to you know be connected to in the world of aircraft carriers and yeah. just operating in a different place. So let me make it clear to you how we view you. You have done something that 98% of the men in the country won't do. 
And then you chose something else that 99% of the people in the country won't do. Sums it up, all right? You can't take that away. When when I write my when we write our book finally, man, it's yeah. people should read it because I I look at my life as being not that I believe in like you know you 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 die and you live another life. I'm as insane. What I'm about to say is like I feel that I've lived like three or four different lives in yes. this one life. Like, you know, coming coming up from one from age one to age seven with a mother and father in the household. Yes. But but then them breaking up and then growing up without a father in the home, yeah. you know, that was a lifetime that that first part of my life was like, that was like, oh, man, that was beautiful. You know, yeah. Yeah. that was back in the 80s, you know, uh, late 80s when the neighborhood, you could go to Miss Summers house and get a dinner, you know, they cook yeah. for you that time. That was before that was right in the beginning of the crack era. Yeah, you know, I before, remember. before the city structure broke, before the we are people before that broke down that whole thing mm -hmm. broke down then selling crack myself you know as, yeah. a, as a teenager you know yeah being a crack dealer on the streets for a couple years i yeah. learned so much i learned so much about re the reality of life of what people are who they yeah. are yeah being the preacher the preacher's daughter yeah everybody you know, nobody knew she was on crack. Now she's coming to buy tons from us. Yeah. You know, the the cops who have the guns on the street and who have drugs on the street. At yeah. age thirteen, I'm seeing all of this. Yeah. No one the killers are. I'm dealing with people who have bodies. Yeah. Your reality was real. Exactly, and 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 beyond. And but then from there, uh, the epiphany. You know, I said it was the most high. It just hit me like, yo, you gotta graduate high school, bro. Yeah. You have to. And I, I, I stopped selling selling crack and just was like, yo, I'm going to school, you know, and yes. graduated, then joined the United States Navy. And then Look. that's another life because that that those Entirely. things the world. And then I become a boxer in that and then boxing, bruh, you know. Yeah. And and even, open. even right now, even right now, I was thinking this morning because I'm I I for 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 those who don't know, I'm, I'm making a comic book. You know, I'm making a comic book company. I'm not just making a comic wow. book. I'm making a comic book company because I All have- All right, tell us about that. Explain uh, that. So basically, in 2009, yeah. 2009, I was out in Vegas at Chris Bird's house. Okay. And um, I was, I, I always draw. When I was in high school, art was my major. Mm -hmm. uh, my my mother never went to college, so she wasn't able to tell me, "Yo, you need to you need to get financial aid paperwork. You need to get your portfolio out. You need to you need to start lobbying some of these schools you want to go to." Mm -hmm. I just was like, "I want I want to go to the Art Institute of Philly or Art Institute of New York." Um, my art teacher was telling me, and I just didn't listen. I didn't have anybody really pushing me at yeah, home. They, yeah, you know, our parent, my parent, then she didn't know. She worked as a nurse, so. Next thing you know, it's May, and my, my friends, all my friends in art class are getting accepted to, to the Art Institute of New York, San so Francisco, Philly. And I didn't have anything. And I'm like, what the freak? What happened? And the art teacher's like, you didn't send anything out. So yeah. next thing I know, I'm like, bro, I need, you know, I need to you know, get out of here. I know I need to get out of Philly. So that's when I joined the Navy for college money and mm -hmm. the same world. But I was always drawing, still drawing. In my training camps, I draw but I'm just scribbling, drawing little stuff here. So I'm at Chris Bird's house and I just, it hit me. It was like, yo, stop drawing just random pictures. Let's draw something that means something. And I was yeah. like, yeah. So I've always heard like, yo, man, you cut up like a bag of dope. You, you look like a superhero. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yo, let me make myself a superhero. So from there, it was just a hobby, 2009 to probably like 2011. Yeah. Then it was like, hey, let me, let me, let me, you know, it was just me drawing and saying, hey, I'm doing a comic book. Then it was, hey, let me make a story. Yeah. You know, let me make a story. So I took some of the a likeness of some of the guys that I fought and turned them into super villains. You know, wow. so I have, I have wow. a character for, wow. I have a character for Emerald Jones. I have a character for Marco Huck. I have a character for Christoph Ladarchik from Poland. And, um, and I have a character for Amir Mansour. I'm going to get to that too. Oh, so, <laughs> no, you can't talk about it. You can't. I, 
we get into that. <laughs> After, yeah. <laughs> that is too much. It's too much. So that was about 2013. It's freezing up or something. My art's getting better. Okay. You know what I mean? Wow. And I'm like, oh, wow. oh this, I'm going to make a big deal. So, so from there, past, what, three years, I started an Instagram page for it, USS Comics. USS Comics? <clears throat> USS Comics. All right. Uh, I've drawn, I've been drawing all kinds of, um, just putting out stuff about the comics. So I figured when Mansoor was fighting Travis Kaufman, yeah, I was like, hey, this would be a good way for me to get the comic book out. Let me make a quick comic book. There it is, the quick crap, which yeah. nothing's quick. Nothing's quick. <laughs> I was thinking of, I had two months. I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to make a comic book of me and Mansoor's fight. And that was, I'm just finishing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two years later. People just, have no idea months. when you do something that's, that, that and, and I'm going to speak about 80% of what you just spoke to. Right, right. When you do something, when you have something that, of value, yes. your next job is to make it valuable. Make exactly. You can't just draw oh, a stick exactly. figure. Yeah, and, 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 and yes. Yeah. Yes. So yes. now, okay, okay. You keep going. no, that was it. You, you, you are having to add value to it, yes. not just having something of value, but making it valuable. And people can enjoy it, and people, kids can can that's, read it, and, and see. that's my thing. I, I yeah. didn't want to. I didn't. At first, it was just going to be that, not stick yeah. figures, but still something short. Me punching a guy that I fight right before yeah. the fight. I'm like illustrations. I want more. You was talking right. about illustrations. Yeah, but I'm like, I want more. I want more. And then once I decided, all right, I'm going to do a little comic book to to help push yeah. USS Comics of Man's yeah. Sword because it was fighting Travis Kaufman. That was pretty big. Yeah, I was like this. Was pushed out and sure. because I already have my story written out I, already, sure. I have it drawn out already. yeah I stopped it and and was like I'm gonna do this Mansoor thing because it made more sense me versus Mansoor I wanted to bring excitement the first comic book I wanted to be a smash like yo this, this is dope smash. and then my or, origin story yeah you know because I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm a comic book fiend you know I'm, I'm more Marvel creative DC, yeah, yeah you're yeah, exactly. mine so you're what I start so Basically, over the years, that story went from a little short comic book to I got a full graphic novel. Yeah, that's so amazing. I had to I had to take it and break it into four parts. So well, the first part, I'm just finished. I'm looking at publishing this week. We've been looking at publishing. I'm about to put out more pictures to, to help promote it, yeah. uh, get some marketing things out, and and I'm I listen. <laughs> I have a comic book universe yeah. written down in my that's head. I've got horror stories I'm going to do. I got stories about slaves. I've got stories about blacks hey. getting killed by cops. I'm drawn. I'm listen, Kobe, I'm drawn. Kobe Bryant. It. Yeah. Get an Oscar for it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? If you yeah. put the time into it, do yeah. it all the way. And that's yeah. what a, that's, that's kind of commendable with it. But one thing yeah. I'm going to do for our fans, the people who are watching, uh, the, I thought it was going, it was live at the moment, but it wasn't. So what I'm going to do is show them that clip that I was speaking to a minute ago that All right. spoke specifically to, hopefully everybody, <laughs> everybody can see this because, man, to come up from Cruiserweight and do this is is amazing. Here's my screen. I'm not going to make any excuses. Yeah. Steve Cunningham was a bad boxer. He's a very good fighter. Yeah, a small guy in for the heavyweight division, but a very good fighter. Very good. Like I say, the toughest man I ever faced was Steve Cunningham. I love seeing that clip <clears throat> because I know what your weight class was. <laughs> <laughs> right. When I saw you step up in there, and I was like, wow, right. you brought that smoke. I was out outside of myself. And to drop someone with the ability, that kind of just shows your grit, your determination, your focus, your willpower. You don't see anything in front of you that you will allow defeat you. And that man thinks of you as the best fighter that he's been in the ring with, and very well so. I don't think that's changed until this day. Now, 
when you think of Amir Mansour, what comes to your mm. mind? Because you that was the first time I jumped off my couch screaming at you. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, first thing that comes to my mind is be fearful of this dude. And I don't mean fearful as in cower down. No, I get it. You know, I'm not gonna get in there, but be be aware that this dude can knock oh, your head, head off. <laughs> yeah. You know, be so don't get in there and get lags of days or slack. And that's what happened in the fourth round when he knocked me down. Yeah. I I it was it was feeling easy to me, you know. It boom, yeah. oh man, boom, boom, okay, okay, boom, make any miss. And I got comfortable and boom, boom, oh, you know, and but you know that 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 made the fight even more exciting, you know, people yeah. like that. <laughs> but with, yeah, I don't think the coach is like that. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, not at all. Not at all. Uh, man, source credit too. Me, I mean, me and him, we were cool before the fight. Yeah. But after the fight, we became tighter. You know, um, it, we. That's my bro, man. What he said after the fight that really, when he said, you know, about my daughter, what he said about my daughter, and he was like, give to their fund. We didn't have a fund. Yeah. We didn't have a fund. That started our goal fund. Yeah. Because it made sense that he was thinking the fact that he, he utilized. And he hits. Yeah. On, yeah. In my DMs and stuff about, about um, yo, how do I give to your daughter? You know, how do I give? I want to help you guys. Yeah. And me, I told my wife, hey, go ahead, start a go fund me. See what happened. You know, and shoot, a month later, it's about $30,000. Uh, oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Oh. It was crazy. Yeah. So the boxing community, they showed some serious love, you know. No, and and I we appreciate that because at that time, you know, people see you fighting on TV and they think you're making buku they bucks. Think automatically you know? that they automatically they just, think you're rich. One thing equals the next. Combat doesn't mean hate. Combat yeah. means people who have the composure and understanding that this is for prize money. This yeah. is a prize fight. The, the, the obstacles you know, change from amateur to professional. And I always talk to my guys and shout out to the School of Boxing, all of the coaches. We have an amazing group of up and coming coaches that are learning the process. And I'm telling them to watch people like you who are in a position who actually have the, the necessary boxing cachet and the yeah. skill set because your skills pay the bills yes, to grab your other goals and everything yes. else. And watching your highlight reel, you put it together very, very good. So I played it for my coaches in the school of boxing. Okay. And they watch and all you heard was wow like ah. that dude is and so these coaches all over the world so yeah. some of them just getting the opportunity to see those type skills in a bigger guy yeah and yeah you, you yeah that that highlight reel that i just played that tyson fury clip when you when you dropped him and he spoke he said it tyson fury right, right. now can take the the best fighter in the world's in banner the world. Basically, right. because regardless of how you win a fight, right? Like Evander Holyfield Tyson, our biggest Tyson fan in the world. Love right. Mike Tyson. And to see Evander Holyfield figure out how to beat him, look, it's going to take everything yeah. to beat him Mike Tyson. So if you right. got everything, them other guys, them other 31 guys he knocked out in the first five rounds didn't figure out how to do it. Right. But to right. know how to do it is, is, is a real thing even though it wasn't how we wanted to see us as Tyson fans, we, we seen him in fights, not dirty and not using craft and craft yeah. is part of yeah. boxing because it's a prize fight. It's gladiator stuff. It's not what you learn in the amateurs. It's not what you learn early in the pros. It's when, when the bag is at stake, when the yeah. bag, yeah. You know, yep. yeah, yep. when that bag is at stake and, and that cements your next bag of money. Exactly. Totally. So, yeah. Why I was so, I mean, you see some of these, you see fighters, they'll lose a fight or get robbed and it's like, hey, okay, all right, yeah, but they're making big money, you know, on those big stages. When, yeah. when I got robbed, I wasn't making big money. You know, yeah. I was making a 
hundred thousand shit. That Tyson Fury fight was uh, seventy thousand bucks. Wow. You know? And that's so that's seventy thousand bucks. And now we made we made almost a hundred because of sponsorship. Yeah. And you know, I sold my trunks to a company from the UK for about fifteen thousand. Now you, you think know, about if you look, you think about them trunks right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you think about if you would have saved them trunks right now, you would have got at least. Well, I still, I have them. I think I, I just gave them to the Philadelphia, um, Hall of Philadelphia Fame. boxing history. Yeah, boxing okay. history. Beautiful. Um, you know, I, I gave them to them. I, I, you know, you know, they, they, they gave me some money for it for my, um, uh, you know, I just yeah. like thanks. Yeah. We'll use it for our amateur boxing team's travel fund. Yeah. But I, I would I gave it to them because you know so they can frame them and everybody can see them. You know those are some very important <clears throat> trunks. <clears throat> That's great because when I was working, so back in two thousand seven, Chris Bird had lost uh, uh, Klitschko and didn't come away. Yeah. with it. it was a rough night in this camp. Yeah. And, you know I, I just I, all week I've had my guys the past couple of weeks just watching Chris Bird and so. Uh -huh. Because we fought him in 2007, Paul Marinaccio. We was at uh -huh. we were on ESPN. Chris Bird fight back. Bad idea. Uh, <laughs> we were in camp. We were in camp. It was a prize fight. Paul's a very, very humble person. He heard his 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 um doing. We were doing power stuff in the drill. So Coach Bradley and I and the rest of the guys, amazing camp. You know, he just wanted to have an opportunity at a title and got yeah. to fight Chris Bird. And <laughs> no one, look, I'm gonna tell you this, and I got, Nobody you, fight and I got you too, I got you too. I got a boxing library of VHS and DVDs that stands back to 1897. So I got all Chris Bird stuff. So you know I know. So not only did I right. say, man, this dude is a savage and his abilities in the ring, the methods right. in, which, in which he used. And I, he always spoke about how his, they had a little small ring in a, in a basement yeah. and they bought in that little eight by nope. eight. The side. And that concept, I said, you know, his deep, that people say, how's defense getting, you mean, you fight in a ring that tight. <laughs> Your defense gonna get good, nope, not, or you are gonna have like be on. Say, or you gonna have drain bramage. <laughs> One of the two. <laughs> <laughs> Look, but I, te I teach people specifically watch his offense, how he touch, find the holes, and create and 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 chop yep, guys yep. down, chop guys down yep. mentally, physically, physically, and psychologically. Take away what they do best with his defense yep. of prowess. Man, he was just an absolute monster. Also, a natural cruiserweight. All of these things showed the progression of the big guys in the heavy, heavier weight divisions. And both yeah. of those guys ended up going up. So I had to kind of speak specifically to that. When I see people like Deontay, who really is a... You take off his shoulders, he's a cruiserweight. He was 201 yeah. when I first saw him. And I was yeah. like, six foot seven. How is he 201? Right, right. So right. I want you to tell me, what, what was your first impression? And who did you have winning going into the fight when he fought Fury the second time? Who did you think was winning the win? I saw I, my initial... Uh, uh, prediction for the fight you know we were on pbc yeah. um you know i was i did that with pbc with did yeah. a demonstration with chris Ariola, and my prediction was was um deontay wilder by kale you know yeah. now i would have totally changed that had i known i found this out the day before the fight yeah that deontay wilder said he does not run <laughs> I would have, I, my, my, I would have changed my prediction completely yeah. because for for yeah. two reasons. One, the first fight, Fury got up off of those two right hands, big yeah. shot. Yeah. He got up and still brought the heat. He buzzed. So I mean, cool. I won't say buzz, but he, he stunned Wilder. Yeah. After he got up, got up that second time, and Fury was game. 
All secondly, is because I went to training camp with Fury after our fight. Yeah, I was. Uh, I went to Belgium he's and sparred with like him that. for, for he's four weeks. Like that, yeah. Right, right. Because they were fighting David Hay. They were scheduled to fight David Hay. Oh yeah. Woo! Another cracker. Basically, so they were like, Woo. "Listen, they're smart. They're like, yo, this this cruiserweight just <laughs> put it down on our butt. This cruiserweight who can't punch, they say. Yeah. <laughs> you know, put us yeah. down on our butt." So his uncle, who uh, Peter, right? We can we can learn how to defend from him. Yeah. And because you know David Hay was going to do that, and David Hay's a, a you know on paper a bigger puncher than me. Yeah. So on paper. You know, so uh, exactly. So, <laughs> so basically, they called me in the camp. So I knew what type of workouts, the cardio. I knew what type of condition Fury was in. You know, yeah. and then that made me think like, wow, it was going to be a rough night for me anyway. Anyway. No matter. I knocked him down because this dude was in shape. He still brought that same heat yeah. throughout the 10 rounds. So, you know, um, or the 12 rounds. So I knew, I know what Fury does to get in shape. Shoot, I took some of that stuff from his camp yeah. and started doing it in my camps. After. That, that was 2013. So this is what I want you to say on that. Could you please explain that there are levels to this game? Oh, completely. <laughs> completely. I mean, listen. The, and the you had already fought. Fury, and you still yeah. realize, oh, it's levels. There's levels. There's yeah. levels. Wow, this dude, this dude, one thing that I took from him in training camp was the rowing machine. I never did the rowing machine. Never even heard about doing the rowing machine for boxing workouts. Yeah. This guy rose. They said his numbers um, um, rivaled the Olympic gold medals on the rowing machine in, in the 500-yard sprint. So we, I did that. I started doing that. And I felt you feel so much stronger, so Different. much better. Yeah. You can last longer. And that's one of the things that helped me in my fights after Fury. Yeah. You know, the man sword fight. fight. <laughs> you know, I was in such better shape, too. Even better the uh shape. the the Tarver fight. Man, I threw seven hundred and some odd punches. He threw four hundred. You was know, working. and the Tarver was smart. The Glasgow fight. Yeah. On HBO, I burned him out. And, yeah. you know, in, in the first, what, seven rounds, and he probably won two rounds after, but, you know, there's no way I should have lost that fight either. But, so when I know what a guy is made of, I should have, I would have picked Fury. I mean, I would have picked Fury for this second win. I just didn't know. Deontay Wilder, he came out, and it was an interview. He said, and he's like, yeah, I don't run. Yeah. I don't run. I'm not a yeah, runner. I don't, I don't, I'm a boxer. And I was like, what? <laughs> and, and you see the effects. Yeah. That second round, third round, after getting hit a bit, he didn't have those reserves to to to, to, no. to um rely on. No, he didn't and have he, any reserves. He, so he, and he went he in there like defending. Crack. And I want yep. you to, and, and, and as the elite athlete that you are, and I want you to speak to when you are at that level, you cannot just depend on power. No, you can't depend on that. When you get in the ring with a guy who's <laughs> at the highest level, I love to fight the guy who's just power. Those those are the guys I had my best performances on. Marco Huck, <laughs> yeah. just power. Yeah. Kelvin Davis, yeah. just power. Oh. Amir Mansoor. I'm not gonna say he's just power because he got he's conditioning. Yeah, but his, yeah, he got he his, yeah, but but his whole thing was mainly power, trying to knock you out. He was he kept going for the knockout on me, and I'm like, great. Boom boom, 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 just touch him, touch him, touch him, and that stuff wears on him. Yeah. Um, Deontay Wilder is completely power. Uh, yeah. We've seen he doesn't have anything else because he couldn't. What else did he rely on? And when you're in trouble, all right, plan A ain't working. Let's go to plan B. Okay, yeah. plan B ain't working. We plan C. You know, you, you have to be able to uh, adapt. adapt. You have to and yeah. change and manipulate yourself to manipulate your opponent and Deontay Wilder, once his power couldn't work, that was it, man. That was it. I'm, so I'm, I'm in full agreement stoppage of the fight. Full agreement. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No doubt. You you gotta you gotta prove to the ref a little bit more yeah. than that. And yeah, yeah. that was, you know, that was that's no question right there. But I wanna I'm gonna say a word, uh, uh, a phrase real quick, and I want you to as being from the, the school that the word muscle memory ah, I mean at the highest level. Bro, that is, that is, 
that's next to conditioning, next to cardio, you know? Yeah. Because you, I, I have my nine-year-old, he, he's, he's talented, born talented. I mean, it's, it's, it's really remarkable. You know, he's a two-time national champ. You know, he's top of the, he's number one in the nation right now. But mm-hmm. he's moving up to bigger kids. He's nine now, you know, and he's fighting nine yeah. and ten. And I'm like, he's stronger. You have to be in better condition. You have to get stronger now. Now, just the boxing. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Now we got to take yeah. it to him now. So I'm on him constantly. Sometimes when I'm laying down, I'm asleep. I'll throw some punches. You know, <laughs> the muscles. Is, that's the truth, you know. That's it. It's muscle memory is highly is is beyond important, man. If you if you it's like I said, it's next to cardio because cardio, you can be talented all day. Yeah. If you ain't if you get tired, that, that talent ain't showing up, bro. Yeah, yeah. You know. Condition. So you need that cardio muscle memory. You need to know muscle memory means you that's conditioning. You're going through. You've been going through the same thing every day, day in day out, day in day out, and you just do it without thinking. Muscle memory was the Tyson Fury yeah. overhand right. That's that's how that's what happened. I'm telling you, the first day we went, we started training camp. We signed the contract, faxed it over to main events, and brother Nazim was like, "Let's go." And um, he's like, "You." He said it too. He said, "You're gonna sit him on his pockets with this overhand right." And I was like, "Okay, let's go." So we drill every day, boom, boom, boom. Every day we drill the overhand right with the left behind the left foot off the jab. We drill that every day. So when Tyson Fury threw that lazy jab out. I didn't even think about it. Yeah. It wasn't even, I, the, when I thought about it was after he was on the ground. Cause I saw the, I saw the lazy jab, boom. That's why I turned around like, oh, like, wow. Yeah. I was really like, what the freak? Yeah. <laughs> you know? That was great. That's good stuff. Yeah, that is good stuff. And seeing that and that word muscle memory, how it attests to what you're going to go into, into the ring yeah. now. And yes. to see when when Fury ate that shot from you, I know he didn't see that coming. And it was yeah. kind of reminded me of when Shane caught Floyd. Yeah. But, and so I want to hear your your opinion and how you take this analogy that I I explained to my guys. I said this this jab. This jab and that head movement, that's your storyline. Right, right. Okay, the storyline of a boxing match, which is you prep, poke, collect data. You use that to see what they're going to do. The next is the bridge. When you start putting it together and touching and finding the holes, and that is where you see people like Chris Bird. And I always use him as an example because if people go back and look at Chris Bird's career, which I got on video, when right, you right. watch him, he was never going out for the early knockout. He was touching, filling the guy touch, out, taking touch, away, yep. taking away his favorite yep. uh, option. And then the chorus, which mm. is the KO blow. Chris always seven, eight round, forget about it. You're done. You're yeah. only a human being. You can't take yep. being chopped down that long. He did, your oxygen is gone. Cardio is irrelevant now because you don't have oxygen yeah. in the body because you've right, been touching, right. touching, touching. You've been missing, missing, missing. And then he starts to add and close it out with those KO shots. He's sitting down yeah. on, boom, that's your core. Yeah. So I yeah, use that as an analogy with my guys. And so it can start to resonate what this means. You're going in there with just the chorus, yep. Tyson style, back yep. in the day, like you got to have yep. more than that. You got to have more than that. And I think about it. So what is your message to a guy like Deontay Wilde? He's younger than you. And you've been through a lot of this stuff. You've been in the ring with a guy that he's been in the ring with twice. What is your message to someone like that who has to come back from this mentally? And is it a good idea to jump right back in the ring with a guy like Tyson Fury that you know oh so well? I don't, I, me personally, let me fix my camera, sorry. Me personally, I don't think it's, a good idea for Deontay Wilder to jump right back into this fight because it's all emotion now. It's all emotion, and he doesn't. Thank goodness for COVID nineteen, you know. And hopefully, <laughs> he, hopefully he's done what he needs to do in this in this six month or you know three whatever how much ever time he's had in between the fight 
to get better. And I'll and tell you what that is after this. But yeah, hopefully he's utilized his time properly in order to to gain um, cardio and endurance. You know, Ooh. those are the things he's lacking. Yeah, he he has an okay jab. He just has to use it more. He has to he has to stop thinking he's going to knock everybody out. If you're going to do, you're going to do. It. Yeah. But stop thinking this is going to click. This is just it. This isn't it sometimes. You're always going to find that one person that will stand up to your best, whatever it is. Then you have to resort to something else. So what I would tell Deontay Wilder is, and I also know, you know, that he doesn't, he doesn't listen to his training team. I, yeah. I know, I know guys yeah. who have been to camp with him. I know yeah. guys who know him. And everyone says the same thing. He runs the show. Yeah. So that doesn't happen with me. When training camp starts, Brother Nazim is the boss. You understand? A, I'm the fighter. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm the fighter. Yes, I'm the I'm the boss. I pay everybody gets paid because of me. That's why I hire Brother Nazim. I hire a trainer to train me. Yes. I'm not hiring a trainer just because I need a trainer. You don't you know, need a yes man and, and, you know, and right. fight him. You need someone who's going to tell you. I've done yep. my homework. I've broken yep. this guy down. Here's yep. the tape. Here's the yep. game plan. Let's get exactly. to work. Let's get this muscle memory going. Yep. Yeah. So what I, I do is, so as soon as camp starts, Brother Nazim, what are we doing? If Brother Nazim said we flipping backwards off of this building, that's going to have you backwards. win. I've got that much confidence in the guy I've hired to train me. No matter yep. what he says do, I believe him. You know? Yeah. I believe him. So, but that Deontay Wilder needs to find that he thinks like that way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He, because the trainers he has, I mean, he's got Mark Breland, who's the one of the, who's probably the greatest amateur. Amateur, they ever laid him up. Hands down. I just you think know? sometimes you feel like when you look at a person, and this is another thing that I use, an analogy that I use. I said, how can you be better at me in game planning when all I do is game plan for you? You training. Right. You got to do your jump rope. You got to right. run. You got to swim. You got to do all of the shadow boxing. You gotta, so you got to focus on your muscle memory and the program mediums that help yeah. you when you get the instructions that all yeah. I'm doing is those. Yep. Like you can't yep. do something that someone's, you can't do something better than someone that's doing it 100% of the time when you're only able to do it 18%, that's ego. Yeah. You gotta remove yeah. that. And it's 100% chance that uh, the likes of people like Shelly Finkel will see this. So if you were if you were to get the call to aid someone like Deontay Wilder in a camp as, as someone who could give advice the way J George Foreman did, would you be up yeah. or something like that? Oh, indeed, indeed, I totally would be. Okay. I totally would because, I mean, everybody can use this. These things. It's, it's not just you that, as a fighter, that's doing this. You, you got a team. Yeah. Um, it's good to get insight from people who've been in there before, mm -hmm. uh, who, who know. And I, 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 me at the top of my career. Shoot, I didn't feel like I was number one. I mean, I, I people, I was, but you know, I'm still looking at. <laughs> hey, well, I yeah. Learn. I still got that to learn. I didn't have that. Yeah, I'm the, I'm the it. I don't have that, you know. So yeah, um, Deontay, that's arrogance, not e that's, yeah. that's arrogance, not confidence. Exactly. So he needs to. Um, I think it would be good for him if if he got some other fighters' opinion. But you know, yeah. I've I've heard a lot, you know, about about him that he is a little bit arrogant, you know, a bit arrogant, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it could get go to your head when you get forty no, knockouts. You know, and, and and that's a and I tell people that I'm like, listen, can you blame the dude? The dude <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dude's knocked out almost everybody he's faced. But you got to remember this. Do. You think yep. about this: Jordan won one, Jordan won two, Jordan won three. Skip yeah. came back, won four. Yep. Won, mm -hmm. But the maniacal drive got yeah. more intense as yeah. the success continued to grow. So you got to nope. step up and add it to that. You got to keep going. You got to keep adding. You, you can't stay the same. You have to keep adding. So with him saying he doesn't run, my main my main advice, I would love to go to a camp with him just to, just to help him get his cardio together. I'd wake him up. <laughs> every <laughs> morning, we're running, bro. Yeah. We're running at least four times a week. 
running, yeah. sprinting, and swimming, and the rowing machine. I'm, I put them through some some stuff. I seen thing I do with my guys, my boys, the guys. Because that you I, guys I, got very similar body types. The lower body is is more sturdy, and you know, because you, you you you've done the runs, yeah, you've exactly. done the lifestyle. You you got yeah, that yeah. genetic, so people, you know, Adonis people, thing going. They, they look at my legs and they're like, oh, you 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 got skinny legs, and I'm like, oh, my thighs are pretty muscular. You know, yeah. it's just you know, I'm I'm tall, I'm tall yeah. and slender. I I can I we deadlift, you know, we 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 do the uh, benches and all that. I'm benching up three something. I but, tell people that the bone density has a lot to do with yeah the strength. Yeah. Don't get caught up in the muscle. Like right, just right. don't. Yeah, so, the density is there. The body dexterity, that's important. Those things, okay. those are the things you can't weigh in on, okay. and you can't. That you know, I seen guys with trunk legs, huge legs, get knocked out easy. Yeah. So that is, don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted yeah. on the, the diameter of a leg. Just what's yeah, on Wilder, the side. Wilder needs Wilder needs that condition. He needs that muscle memory for for. Cardi. I set up his punches better. That's it. And I think we someone like you, and as I look at your highlight now. reel, and, and I think he does have his moments where he has moments of setting up. But what's the phrase we always use? Yeah. There's levels to the commitment to it. The commitment to it. Yeah. Watch right. right. set right. punches, Stop. disguise and hide the bigger punch. And yes. I watch you do it as well. And you look at people who really like Tarver is good at stuff like that. You got to learn. Oh, how to very, that's the thing with, with Tarver, man, people people were disappointed at the fight. It was a boring fight because I'm not going to rush in on Tarver. Tarver's intelligent. No. He's very intelligent. Yeah. Beyond intelligent, you know. Yeah. Um, I don't care how old he is or how pudgy he looks in the stomach. Yeah. You know, and this is before we found out he was on performance enhancement drugs, but still, that man is very intelligent, yeah. you know, in the ring. So you're not gonna just run in and beat Tarver up. That's not gonna happen. So um he's very deceptive, you know, very very deceptive. Very deceptive, but I tell people this anybody that's arguing with James Tony about the best defense, right. I ain't trying to go in there sleeping on him. So you better right. not, even if you can argue right. with James Tony about your defense being better, you, right. you got to have something on defense. So, but his nope. ability nope. in offense is definitely great. And my last question that I want to pose to you, there's a, 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 a heavyweight uh, in, the, in the UFC. And once again, I'm always telling you that when I reach out, I always try to see and think of me as the great connector. Uh, that's what I want to always be known as to help people connect that would need some help with the box inside of thing. And I don't know if, if uh, I've been invited to come to the camp and I wondered if you would be up for yes. something and we can discuss, you know, the details of things as we, you know, of, of this, but yeah, that indeed. interests you to work with someone you know, that's kind of not in our sport, but still in the world of combat when it comes down to it because of oh, yeah, I would. your ability. Oh, yeah. that, that would be, um, you know, like I, like I said before, I'm in, I'm, I look at my life as in like stages of life, you know, that would, yeah. that would add to another, <laughs> another yeah, lifetime. Later. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because one of my other, one of my other former guys, Rashad Holloway is now working with Tony Ferguson, who just fought a few okay. weeks ago. And, uh, you know, hey, he's on the other side. He's helping out big time. So that sport also is requiring a lot of us guys who have the boxing knowledge and understanding and those who have the ability to get in there and work physically with yes. these guys. And I get a lot of these uh, situations. So I, I just wanted to make sure that if I, you know, tapped on your door, you'd be you willing Dude, to. Dude, hey, hey, I love it, man. That's awesome, man. That's dope. Right. I mean, no, that's I a beautiful. I train about 12 amateurs in my gym now. And uh, okay. like, we, we're the where only- Where are you at right now? Where, where are you at? Where are you located? I'm in uh, Pittsburgh. I'm in the Pittsburgh area, North Russell. Are, my... are you yep. serious? You're in Pittsburgh? My sister lives in Pittsburgh. Oh, Monroe. really? Yeah. Oh, oh, what? I live in Monroe. <laughs> you serious? That's I'm crazy. In I live what? in Monroe. This is where we're at right now. Monroe. Oh, my God. Is that crazy. too crazy? 
Well, look, man, I'm going to send you a message in an email and shout out your email or your, your, yeah, your three years. Email. Let people know, let people know where you are, where they can find you and follow you on Instagram, Facebook, your website, drop it. Where can they find you and yep. reach out to you? You guys can find me at on Instagram, the real USS. Well, actually, I'm sorry, right now it's USS is legend. I switched it the other day. <laughs> All right. Uh, USS is legend on Instagram. My comic book page, USS Comics on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Beautiful. Uh, and uh, Facebook is Steve Cunningham. Just check me out, man. But mainly, I love you guys to check out the comic book uh, pages, USS Comics. All kinds of art. Everything's drawn by me. Beautiful. The uh, fight scenes for the first comic book that's going to come out before the end of this summer, which is USS vs. Hardcore Mansoor. In the fight, in the comic book, our fight scenes are actual fight photos <laughs> from our fight. I right? love it. By me. Good so, stuff, man. Look, until I enjoyed every moment of this. I can do this with you all day. I will <laughs> definitely in t contact with you and we'll we'll connect and co have some conversations, man. But until next time, you be blessed at Godspeed. Be safe. Too, and we look Thank forward you. to the next time we tangle it up. And I, this was absolutely beautiful, man. Thanks again, man. All right, all right buddy.